Hello, everyone. My name is Phil Carscown with Carscown Real Estate. I, I work out of the uh, Windermere West office right here in local Renko Station. Um, I say right here um, because I'm also a neighbor. I live here in a neighborhood. And my, uh, my, my goal here is to provide some insight into what is your Renko market doing? Um, how does it compare to, you know, you know, some other neighborhoods in the area. Um, and ultimately just, I want you guys to feel like you have a, a real estate resource in your back pocket, you know, if, and whenever you're looking um, to buy or sell real estate, um, I'm your guy. So with that being said, let me uh, share my screen here real quick and we'll get into it. So um, this is the, the, the website that you guys are probably on right now is you, you find me, it's a uh, Ranko real estate, um, dot com. Um, as you, um, scroll down, actually, I'm not on RankoRealEstate.com. This is RankoRealEstate.com, and you're watching this video right here. Um, if in the future, you just want to see the report itself and the data, you can click here. My goal really with this presentation, the first one, because I've just done some more marketing, um, is to, is to just help you guys feel really comfortable with metrics. You know, how do I, how do I evaluate, you know, is a, our price per square foot, is it going up? Is it going down? What does it mean? What is it relative to? We're going to talk about just some volumes of, of homes that are being bought and sold. We're going to talk about this slide. This is a really important slide, average day on market and, and sales price of original list price. What does that mean? Stay tuned. I promise you by the end, you guys will understand all this. And then this one, the elusive months of inventory. Yes, you're going to love this one once I get to that point. <laughs> but scrolling back up, um, also, there's some other fun links on here. If you want to know how many homes are for sale right now, as of today, just click here. If you want to see which ones have sold recently, click here. And if you want a quick, easy estimate of what your home is worth, click here, orangohomevalues.com. All right. But with that being said, let's jump into the presentation and the report by clicking here. So basically, what I'm going to do in this video is just go over the data and information you know, in the report so that in the future, you can just jump straight in here or if you want to listen to my video, you can, but you, you definitely don't have to. You could just bypass that. So um, actually, you know, let me scroll back up here to this slide. Um, I know it's a little corny, but I really do believe that real estate about, is about relationships. Okay, That's how I've chosen to, to run my business. Um, and we've been really um, lucky and, and blessed with some great clients. Uh, me and my wife are very intentional with running a just a smaller boutique um, you know, concierge style real estate company. And we really do tailor every single one of our transactions to our clients' needs, okay, and their goals and their objectives. Um, and we've been really lucky. If you haven't already, uh, please take a moment, Google me, and um, just look at our reviews. Um, we were just really proud of them, okay? We, we've had some, again, really amazing clients, and we're very proud of our, our, our five-star um, Google review. So that's it. Um, you'll never get a sales pitch from me. It's I do want to share that, though, because it is important. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to keep scrolling here. I am from Toronto, Canada, and that will come out and about, especially when I talk about houses. So um, I usually get I usually, I usually get called out for that. So um, I'll scroll by here as well, but take a moment. We do have a weekend away um, home selling package where we will, um, we will, you know, give you a travel voucher so you can get away to make minimums or something like that as we show you a home and then we clean it. We have some other things in there that we do. So, all right. So this is the meat and potatoes of the, the report. Um, first thing I will point out is that everything in these reports is interactive. Okay. So you can click on any of the homes. You can scroll, read the details. Okay, you can click on the images, scroll through the images, um, things like that. Um, that's really important because as you, you probably are a homeowner if you're watching this, uh, maybe you're not, um, but maybe you want to get an idea of what a recently sold home, this one sold for $910,000. What did that home have that, that justified that sales price? And I'll say right off, this is the highest, um, one of the highest um, sold homes in the area of all times, Okay what's unique and special about this house, okay? How does it compare to maybe your house that's 2,700 square feet? You know, what's the fixtures? What type of flooring? What type of finishes? Um, what's the, the setting around it? Is it on green space? Is it on a busy road? Things like that will impact, um, you know, what a, a home might sell for. So that's why we put all this information in here. So it's really um, at your fingertips um, when you need to, all right? Um, now I'm going to keep scrolling down here a little bit. Actually, before I do that, I, I do I do want to call out. So for the purpose of the the presentation I'm doing here is I've included Orenco Station, um, Q Orenco Gardens. I did not include old Orenco Station. Okay, I say old. It should be original. It's original Orenco. Okay, 
I did not include original Aranko just because the homes there really are, it, it's, a, it's a different type and style of home and living. Um, I love the homes there, I'm being very clear. There's no shade being thrown to original Aranko. Um, I love the lot sizes. I like the styles of the home. I like the mature trees, everything about over there I liked. And um, the presentation I'm doing right now is really focusing on Aranko Station, Aranko Gardens and the condominiums and stuff in between. Um, I also am only doing single family homes in the particular video you're watching right now, okay? Everything you're going to learn about metrics can be applied to, you know, any type or style of home, but I just pulled the data for um, single family homes. I will do another video um, for townhomes um, and probably include the condominiums and stuff in there because we have a lot of really beautiful, awesome townhomes in there. So I, I will do that um, in another video, hopefully down below. You'll see that. Um, I think that's everything I want to talk about here. Scrolling down. This is my favorite slide. Um, I like it because it's side-by-side it's -side comparison of all the homes. I can look at everything and on one screen and it really does, um, it's an easy way for me to reference the metrics that I'm gonna talk about. So first of all, what I'll say is the first couple of homes are homes that are currently active for sale. You can tell that right here where it says status is active. Then these homes are sold, okay? So typically I'm gonna be looking at the sold home data for, you know, as we determining, you know, what's the market doing. Um, however, the active homes really do tell a really important piece of the pie as well. So a couple of metrics on here as we're scrolling through. First one, as I talked about, is price per square foot. So this is kind of a, well, I don't want to say it's a dummy metric, but it's a really simplified metric. All we're doing with this one is we're taking the sold price, in this case, 700000 dividing it by how many square foot the home is, and it gives us a price per square foot of two ninety five. dollars Okay? So that's a really just, again, down and dirty way of quickly looking at something and seeing, you know, is it, in or out of the ballpark, okay? You know, if we saw a house here that was $500 a square foot, wow, okay? That tells us that's probably, a, it's an anomaly, first of all, but it would be outside of what the area as a whole um, is um, going for. On the flip side, if we saw one that was, you know, $211 a square foot, we'd be like, hey, what's going on with that house? It's either a really motivated seller or maybe it's needing some work. You're like maybe it's a fixer or something like that. It's a lower price per square foot. Um, but it is a number that we use often just to see where we're at, you know, in a ballpark. And I'm going to talk about a couple of these here a little bit in a little bit. All right. The next one, which I love because it really does tell me how hot this market is, is percentage of list price. Okay. In the other slide, it, it's listed as sales price as percentage of original list price. So again, what this means is this home listed, okay, for 689000 it ended up selling for 700,000. The sales price was 102% of the list price. Does that make sense? So it sold for, you know, you know, essentially 2% over asking, all right? So this is really important. As you guys all know, the market's been going gangbusters the last, you know, 6 to 16 months it seems like. And we've been seeing a lot of over asking price home. So in this particular one, like look at Oreco, 102, 107, 117. 101, 109, 113, um, all over ask price, okay? Um, really good metric to know. Um, and actually, let me scroll down one more because my next slide, yeah, this is a fun slide because this has everything on it and it's interactive. Um, the interact interactive piece just means you can, you know, remove. We say, hey, what are the active homes on the market? What are they selling for? Or what's the average day on the market? Um, there's also, if there's homes that are pending, that will pop up here too. There'll be another option here. You say, okay, of the homes that are pending right now, meaning someone either under contract or they haven't closed yet, what's the average? Um, this is a, a neat slide for that. So just summarizes all the data on the other slide. So what you can see is the average, you know, home sold is 2,183 square feet. Okay, average is three and a half baths, um, two points or three and a half bedroom, 2.75 baths. Um, average price per square foot sold is $328. So actually, let me do this. I'm gonna take a moment. I'm gonna tie in the other slide, which I said we would we would understand here a little bit. So this is data for um, all of um, 97124 area code, okay? Which is, we're a part of that. So this will tell us how is a Renko selling comparative to 97124. All right, so what this is telling us is on average, um, the average price per square foot in 97124, last month was $311 per square foot, all right? We are sitting at 328, 
right? So we're, was that $17? Um, we're $17 higher, which is somewhere between five and 8%, I guess, um, higher than the, the area as a whole, okay? So that's a good thing for us. Um, the other thing that's really nice is, um, actually, let's compare this. So now we look at, let's look at days of market, right? So again, days on market means from the time that house goes list as for sale, okay, in the multi-listing system um, or multiple listing system till when it goes pending, okay? So in Hillsborough, 97124 as a whole, that number is 10 as an average, okay? So 10 days average, here we're averaging three. So what does that tell us? That tells us that comparative to 97124 as a whole, our houses are going about a third quicker, okay? Or three times quicker here than they are Hillsborough as a whole. That's kind of a neat thing, number. And that's something we're gonna keep our eye on moving forward because we are seeing as, as many of you, anyone watching this knows, is we've recently had an increase of hose, uh, hosing. <laughs> I told you, uh, we had an in, increase of interest rates um, that are affecting um, the mortgages, okay? So literally we were playing with 2.75% interest rates, 3.25% interest rates, and now we're all the way up to five and 6%. So what that has caused is a contraction, a contraction in the market where um, if you used to qualify for a $400,000 house, well, now you qualify for a 300 or 325, okay? Um, and unfortunately, and I really do mean, unfortunately, a lot of people on the lower price points, they're the first ones to get impacted by this. Cause again, an example I just used with 400,000, if now you qualify for 325, well, there's just not a lot of homes out there in that, in that price point. So they drop off. Okay. Um, I do have some other content on my social media sites where I talk about how to, um, still get in the game and, and still qualify for higher price points, just based on different loan programs, USDA loans. Um, we have some really good ARM products that are coming back, and that's been a, a dirty word. Adjustable rate mortgage has been a dirty word for probably the last 10, 12 years. Um, but now we have some really good adjustable rate mortgage programs. Um, there's a lot of good options out there is what I'm saying. So you still can get some lower interest rates. You just have to work with a really good lender. So please hit me up if, if you need a lender and just want to get creative. Um, so basically what has happened is as interest rates have gone up, it's, it's, it's caused a contraction of the market and we're right in the midst of it. We're three to four weeks into this. I'm really curious to know what the next month's stats are going to look like um, comparative to what we have right now. Because what we're seeing is more inventory going up. Okay, so let me go over here because we want to talk about inventory right now. Okay, what we're seeing is more houses available to be sold and they're staying on the market a little bit longer because we don't have quite as many buyers as we did, you know, maybe two or three months ago. Okay, so let me pause here and talk about inventory numbers. Okay, the green is sold homes, the solid green, sorry, dark green. The light green is houses, houses, houses for sale. And if you can look, you can tell for the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 months, we've sold more houses than we had for sale. Okay, so I'm not a statistician. Okay, I can't even say it. Uh, what I can tell you, though, and you don't need to be, is that if you're selling more homes than we have for sale, how does that work? Okay, I'll tell you how that works. What we're actually doing is we're depleting our inventory. Okay, we're depleting our inventory. So I'm going to scroll down here to this one, which I'm always excited to talk about. It's called months of inventory based on closed sales. Okay, so what we're saying here is we have this of April. Okay, it's the most current data we have. We have 0.5 months of inventory. So if today we stop listing any more homes, in 0.5 months, we'd run out of houses, okay? Now, this number is probably kind of not relative or abstract to you. Um, we've had 0.2 months of inventory. We've had 0.4, we've had 0.6. What I can tell you is this is the lowest number, okay, metric for months of inventory since we started recording months of inventory numbers, okay? This is the lowest. So I wanna point, I want to put 0.6 and 0.5 into perspective. In an ideal market, okay, um, we'll have somewhere between three, four, five months of inventory. Okay, when you start hitting about six months of inventory, that's when you'll start seeing um, homes de depreciating. Okay, that's at six months of inventory. Okay, we're at 0.2 months of inventory. Okay, that's what's when we have lots of buyers, not a lot of listings. That's what's happening. But if you notice, we've been ticking up. 
Yeah, we've been ticking up. And I think anecdotally, at least my experience has been, I've been seeing more homes hitting the market. I've been seeing um, them staying on the market a little bit longer. And I'm anticipating and predicting um, that we'll see this continuing to go up. So, and fingers crossed, I hope it does because, and we want a balanced market. 0.2 months is not balanced. What happens with 0.2 months is you don't have people wanting to list because they can't find a house to buy. Okay, does that make sense? Because if you're looking to move, right? You're selling your house. If you're staying local, you want a house to move to. And if there's 0.2 months of inventory, there's not that many options. So again, now that we see inventory numbers, okay, um, houses for sale, you know, ticking up, okay, we'll start seeing um, more people selling as well. It, it, it's, it's, that's like a healthy market, okay? And, and again, anecdotally, we're seeing that. I think we'll see the houses stay in the market a little bit longer. Um, and this is all positive stuff. It's all, it's all good stuff. Um, to speak really quickly to it, you know, are we, are we in another bubble? Okay. First thing I'll say is I don't have a crystal ball. No one knows the future, but what I can speak to is 2008, 2009, when we did have a bubble. Okay. 2008, 2009. Um, and I won't get into the minutiae. I won't get into all of it. Um, but basically what we had was an incredible influx of inventory, um, because of the adjustable rate mortgages I was speaking of earlier, um, interest rates went up, the adjustable rate mortgages went up, and we had a lot of people who could not afford the houses they were in, okay? And they had no equity, okay? As a result, we had a, a ton of foreclosures um, and we flooded the market, okay? And then when, again, what I say, once you hit about six months, that's when you're gonna start to see a price decrease, okay, of homes. In 2009, um, 2008, 2009-ish, when we had that bubble, we had six years worth of inventory, okay? We had six years worth of inventory, not six months. So prices just dropped really steeply. Um, we're not in that situation, okay? We're not in that situation at all right now. Um, we're 0 0.5, 0 0.6. We'd like to get up to three or four months. Um, and, you know, time will tell. Um, with interest rates, uh, one of the, the unique things with um, the bond market, when the feds announced they were going to raise interest rates, um, a lot of people pulled out at that point. A lot of investors pulled out. They didn't wait for interest rates to go out. And I share that just because um, there's some speculation amongst economists, not amongst, you know, Phil, you know, just speaking, um, that we actually might, rates might actually decrease before the end of the year. Um, and hopefully they'll be leveling off and we won't feel the impact quite as much as um, we might otherwise. Because I know, I know the feds have talked about raising rates, um, um, you know, raising some of those, but um, this hang in there, um, I would say the steepest change has already occurred. That's probably a safe way to say, okay. So the steepest interest rate um, hike has probably already occurred and we'll see it kind of probably bouncing around um, for the next six months or so. And then hopefully they're anticipating that it might even drop um, interest rates and they're right, they're right in the, the high fives, um, you know, low 6% interest rate right now. So, um, I think that was all I want to talk about on that, um, only other thing I will say is in comparison to like 2008, 2009, the other reason why we had a lot of foreclosures were we had people with no equity in their home, okay? Because of some of these, um, well, they're fraudulent lending practices. Um, we had people in homes um, that were in way over value. They pulled money out. And again, I won't get into it. My point is, is right now, um, we have one of the highest percentages of equity within homeowners, meaning I think it's, actually, I don't remember the number, but the, we're at a record high number for people with more than 20% equity in their home, which means, you know, in the event they wanted to sell, they have the room to sell um, and still make money. So that, 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 that is an important um, differentiation from uh, 2008, 2009. Um, I don't think I talked about this. Um, maybe I did. I'll repeat myself. If I did, I apologize. Um, but, um, 10 months, 10 days on the market is the average. I did talk about this. We're at three percentage of um, list price. Um, Hillsborough as a whole is 106. Uh, we're about 108 in Aranko station or Aranko as a whole. So that's a good number for us. Um, I talked about this. There is a seasonality to, um, there's a seasonality to, um, just homes going to the market. So we, we anticipate seeing more coming up in the summer. And I think that's it. I think I covered everything I want to cover you guys. If you guys have questions, please let me know. I'm happy to answer them. Again, my goal is to provide some value um, to you guys. And um, obviously I'm not trying to talk anyone in the buying or selling their house, but if you are looking to, please let me know. 
And even if you're not and you have a question, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to help. Um, in closing, I do want to give a shout out to our Agents for Youth program. It's something we're really proud about. As I mentioned, I'm from Canada. I have a lot of family in Canada. My wife has family in the East Coast. And sometimes we get that call saying, hey, we're looking to buy or sell a house or they know someone who is. So we actually established a program where we find and pre-qualify real estate agents wherever in the country someone is looking, okay? Um, and as and when we get a... Um, we are then donating 50% of all income we get from those agent referral um, um, transactions, okay? And we're donating into a youth-based charity um, or a charity of our clients choosing. So we're really proud of this. Um, please click here to get more information. In a nutshell, if you know anyone in the entire country is looking to buy or sell, holler at me. I will find them a really squared away agent um, that's a high performer um, you know, in their area and in the specialty that they're looking to do, whether it's like, um, you know, land or condominiums or investment properties. We'll find someone really good for you. Um, and we're going to donate 50% of all that income to charities um, of your choosing or a youth-based charity. So I think that's it, you guys. Um, I threw a lot at you. I'm looking forward to meeting you. If you guys see me out and about in Aranko, please stop me and say hello. And I think that's everything. Thanks you again. Have a great day, you guys. Bye.